one. So hello and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. This is the EU US edition. Today is November 16th. Uh, at this point in time, we have myself, Kevin Martins and Bruno Vratin joining us. And uh, Mark's listed here if he shows up, uh, which I'm sure he will. Uh, we'll welcome him in and anyone else that joins. For the agenda today, we've got a couple of newer blog posts that were published in the last uh, week since we last met. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll highlight the Jenkins Java support plan as well, since that's still a very big topic for us. Uh, LTS release successful yesterday. Google Summer of Code 20, 2024 uh, preparations begun. Uh, the Contributor Spotlight project and site and where we're at with that. Uh, the update CLI discussion. Version documentation site for Jenkins.io uh, and housekeeping for next week. Anything else that you'd want to throw on there, Bruno? No, thank you, Kevin. Cool. All right. So, what just happened? All right. Sorry, uh, that went somewhere I didn't know where we were going. So, uh, first up, so the Jenkins Contributor Summit at Fosdem blog post. So this was written by John Mark Mason, and uh, we're having a Jenkins Contributor Summit prior to Fosdem 2024. Really exciting. Uh, so Fosdem is going to be uh, February 3rd and 4th. The Contributor Summit is going to be on the 2nd of February, so uh, that Friday. Uh, the blog post is really well done. Thanks to John Mark for writing this up. It's got important dates, location, entry fee, which there is none. Really nice. Um, but yeah, contact information, agendas, all sorts of stuff. So really lovely information. Thanks again to John Mark for writing this up. Uh, but yeah, real, real exciting. Looking forward to that. We haven't had a contributor summit proper for a little bit, so that's going to be really great to uh, have. Uh, we also had the October newsletter published. So again, uh, as always, the accomplishments and um, things you want to celebrate from the last month from all the SIG leaders, stuff like Hacktoberfest, the platform modernization, Java 21, uh, security releases, all sorts of great stuff that's been happening. So uh, by all means, check it out as always. Uh, and then the last blog post I wanted to highlight was the Java support plan that we've introduced, the 2 plus 2 plus 2 plan. Uh, so we've been discussing this for some time now. Uh, thanks to Basil Crow for writing up the blog post. Does a really, really great job of presenting the uh, background ideas, proposals uh, that were rejected, and proposals that were accepted, or and proposal that was accepted, uh, and provide some information to keep in uh, keep in mind going forward. So uh, this also announces some end of life for uh, other uh, OSs. So. Um, yeah, just really great work by Basil here. Thanks to him for writing this all up and presenting these arguments and these ideas in such a really clear and concise way. Um, as we've said, uh, and as I've kind of explained before, the idea and the accepted proposal is that we'll have uh, two years of uh, support, two years of required, and then two years where we're not supporting it anymore. And that'll fall in line with upstream support from other vendors. Uh, Java itself's release cycle, uh, and num a number of other things. Um, this will make sure that we're not uh, cutting anyone off too early, that we're providing the latest and greatest features and tools for development, uh, and that we're supporting something that we ha uh, have integrated into our system for uh, quite some time. So really great, really lovely. Uh, and there's ongoing discussion within the JEP. So, uh, if you have any concerns, questions, or you want to be part of that discussion, uh, by all means, that's wh what we're hoping for. So you can log those thoughts here in the JEP, and uh, that's an ongoing discussion. Uh, this is where we've really kind of determined all the stuff that's presented in Basil's blog post. So uh, if you want to see the extended discussion, there it is. Uh, for the LTS, so uh, 2.426.1, our new baseline, was released yesterday. Everything went well, everything's successful, and the release is available. Uh, the changelog and upgrade guide have been merged and published, and uh, Mark was able to actually catch the fact that despite talking about Java 21 support everywhere, uh, except the changelog, um, we neglected to put that in there. Mark submitted a pull request that's already ready to, mer ready to be merged and published, so uh, that will be incorporated into the changelog and upgrade guide uh, by the time this meeting's over. 
Uh, and something I wanted to highlight was the fact that Update CLI went through and did its job uh, and updated the LTS and weekly versions in various parts of the documentation. Uh, and it went really well. It came in, it did its initial pull, it added some more commits, which is great. Um, so it went back and actually checked its work and did more work. And uh, yeah, really exciting. And uh, thanks again to Bruno for incorporating the update CLI. So that made uh, that a lot easier. Thank you for letting me do that. <laughs> of course. Uh, and we'll have some more discussion about update CLI a little bit later in the agenda. So uh, yeah, more to come on that. So now I had a, and you say you're, we're going to talk about update CLI later, so it's okay if I delay my questions to later? Yeah, yeah. I think Great. it's actually just a couple topics, Mark. Yep, right there. Okay. So, um, so yeah, uh, next topic on the agenda. So Google Summer of Code 2024 prep has begun. Uh, Mark and Chris met last week in the Asia Docs office hours and went over project ideas, uh, just where things are at right now. Chris is leading the Google Summer of Code 2024 work. So thanks to Chris for stepping up and taking on that role. That's great to see. Uh, and Mark has presented some, um, some ideas here that uh, they've got in a uh, tracking sheet now. So uh, Chris's ideas, Mark's ideas, uh, all the ideas will be part of that tracking sheet. Um, and yeah, um, Mark, is there any, uh, would you like to uh, just talk about any of these ideas at this point in time or uh, to be uh, to be determined uh, more work to come still? Well, actually, so there's one of them that is truly relevant to documentation. Mm -hmm. So how about we take that one, backend extension, extension index or the very top one there. Yep. Um, this is a, feature of the Jenkins documentation site. So if you'll open www.jenkins.io mm -hmm. and search for extensions okay. and click that. And now on this page over on the bottom half of the right hand side text, it says the extension index, click that extensions index. No, back the extensions yep. index, that one. Notice that what this lists, it says extensions points, extension points defined in, and then goes down a long list of plugins. However, as you scroll down, you'll notice that it's rather glaring in their absence that it's not 1800 plugins. And there are some conspicuous absences in this list. For instance, scroll up between GCP and Giddy, we'd expect the Git plugin. And we don't. So what's happened is when we added incremental support into plugin builds, that incremental support unfortunately broke the tool that does this backend extension indexer generation. So one of the proposals for Google Summer of Code is why not have a Google Summer of Code contributor rewrite the backend extension indexer one, so that it can be much, much faster because the technique that it was using before and is still running is painfully slow and very heavyweight. There are far better ways to do the job than what, what the existing code is doing. And so the idea is right now, this page is woefully incomplete because it's missing any plugin that defines an extension, but also uses incremental also delivers incremental builds and most plugins or many, many plugins now, and certainly all the, all the high use plugins have already defined incremental builds. Therefore we're losing their entries from the extensions index and we want those back. So rewrite the back end extension and back end extension indexer is one of the project ideas. Right. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for uh, detailing all that, Mark. Very much appreciated, and it very helps uh, clarify what the issue is there. Um, I remember seeing this being discussed previously, so it's nice to see that this is front of mind for our uh, Google Summer of Code project. It sounds like it's a really great candidate for that. Mm -hmm. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, do, 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 do. And then, uh, yeah, more work's being done. Uh, the application's not due yet, so there's time to prep and gather more ideas. Uh, we are looking for mentors now uh, as we are gathering ideas. If we can find mentors now that are happy to participate, contribute, and uh, lead in some way, shape, or form, that's great. We can help get projects assigned after the fact, but 
having that enthusiasm and that uh, that drive and the mentors that are having them available prior means that we can assign those a lot easier. Uh, anything else on Google Summer Code 2024, Mark? Nothing, nothing else for me at this point. We've got more okay. things coming. Right. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, so the contributor spotlight. So this is something that we talked about last week. Um, Chris Stern has done a really fantastic job of helping create the site. Um, thanks to you, Christina Pizzagalli, for providing the original mock-up and all of the contributors that have been working with us on this. This has been really fantastic. Um, so if you're not aware, basically what we've been working on for the last few months is gathering data and trying to determine who the heaviest contributors to Jenkins are. Uh, and what we want to do is highlight them and share our thanks and appreciation. Uh, there, none of this really exists without the work of the community. So it, we want to highlight the community. Uh, Chris Stern has created a ticket with the Infra team to help get this site uh, into the infrastructure. Uh, I'm working on the contributor stories and getting those compiled and put together and, and reviewed by the contributors and other parts of the team, other members of the community. Uh, and so we've got a uh, prototype site, basically a mock-up of what's what we've done thus far. Uh, and everything's going along really well. We're really excited to bring this to the community. Uh, we have about 10, 11 responses altogether right now, uh, but we have enough content that we'll be publishing for a little while, enough time that we'll be able to gather more responses. Um, and yeah, it's just a really great opportunity for us to thank and appreciate the contributors that make this all work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just to go to showcase the prototype site a little bit here. Um, so again, thanks to Christina for uh, Pizza Gailey for creating the mock-up in the first place to help guide us on this. Um, and again, Chris Stern has done amazing work to get this to where we're at right now. Um, and so the first person that we got a response from and that we'll be publishing is Alexander Brandes, who's uh, part of the Jenkins Governance Board and has been a contributor for some time. Uh, and it's really, it's just, it's a chance for us to share who the contributors are, uh, not only as contributors and members of the Jenkins community, but who they are as people. Um, it's an aspect that we might not get to uh, interact with as often based on uh, you know, what the goal is of Jenkins. So uh, it's nice to just be able to share some background and insight from these folks uh, and understand who they are. And yeah, again, thanks to all the contributors for uh, collaborating and working with us on this. Uh, we couldn't do it with any, uh, without any of their help. So um, taking the time to respond, do uh, inter for, uh, meet for interviews with me, uh, whatever it takes. Um, and thanks to Alyssa Tong, Jean-Marc, uh, Mason for helping gather all the materials, data, and organizing the, all of this. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's just really exciting. We're, we've got a couple of little tweaks and things that we're still working through and working on, uh, but for the most part, the progress has been amazing. Um, and at this point, we're just waiting for, to get the site live. So uh, looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, it's probably, um, We've been working with the Jenkins Infra team to help get this up and running. Uh, Hervé Lemire has been helping with uh, the work on that, and we're looking at the next uh, week or two to get it live. Um, the Infra team's helped prioritize this in their milestones, so uh, we're in the right place and we're working, uh, every, yeah, we're getting to the, the finish line. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the update, the ongoing update CLI discussion that we've been having for some time now. Uh, again, we've merged the original one. You saw update CLI in action where it updated the uh, LTS and weekly documentation versions. Uh, and then a newer pull request that uh, we've been discussing as well is the idea of having separate LTS and BOM version update CLI manifests. So we have a running log of when these changes were made and uh, by which um, update CLI uh, action. So. Um, but Bruno, uh, I want to throw it over to you. You wanted to, uh, no, but Mark insights... had a question, uh, I think. Oh yeah, that's right. It was just, just related to Bruno. There was a, a pull request earlier today, today and you closed yeah. it and I wasn't sure why it looked like it was a, a good outcome. So tell, tell us more or tell me more. Yes. 
My fault. Uh, the thing is, uh, the update CLI request are supposed to come from GitHub Actions um, when we update, when we merge, when we create a pull request on Jenkins.io repo. The thing is, I was working on another uh, PR regarding update CLI on my laptop. And unfortunately, my environment variables were targeting the Jenkins IO repo and not my local repo. So uh, I found out after uh, writing in the PR, mm, that sounds fishy. I don't have a text. And then I searched it. Oh, oh, oopsie. I made a boo boo and it was my fault because it was coming from my laptop with a, an experimental version of the update CLI. So it's not working as expected. So that's okay. Um, the upcoming PRs from um, the GitHub Actions with Update CLI should be fine and doing their jobs correctly. This one was an error. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. Thanks very much, Bruno. Uh, and yeah, so um, to provide a little bit more background, so uh, updates, update CLI is in place working as uh, it expected, it was working really well so far. Uh, this would basically separate it so that the LTS and uh, bomb versions would be separate logs instead of one uh, one combined log. This would just this would generate uh, two PRs instead of one. So a little bit more noise, but more accuracy and more um, uh, yeah accuracy. Um, so. I, th I mean, I think it's a good idea to have the, the manifest and the logs. I shared that before, um, yep. but yeah. Great work, Bruno. Thank you. Can, uh, yep. ten years. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Uh, are we still, so is this still being discussed further? Uh, we're waiting to see next like release results or what, um, where, where are we at, Bruno, with that? I think this one is ready to merge and there is no harm merging it because we won't see another LTS release for a while. So this could be catastrophic, but 11 weeks from now. <laughs> so we still have time. We can wait until next LTS or we could merge it and cross our fingers until the next LTS comes out. No, frankly, there isn't that much of um, uh, a difference uh, I've just split the file to have two different manifests with two different PR titles, and that's all I did. I didn't change the mechanics of uh, how Update CLI works for us, so it should be seamlessly, you know, smooth. Got it. Cool. All righty then. Um, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't have any issues with that. Uh, Mark, any reservations on merging that? At, uh, some point today or tomorrow or no I, I did actually have one question though so so bruno while you're here maybe i'm going to ask ask my question so kevin could you open up the choosing a jenkins version page the one that this is controlling yes uh, da, 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 da. oh nice slide nice nice blog post i like that <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so on this page mm -hmm. look for 2.35 there we go. Okay. No, no, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's not it. Okay. Further down. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. It's right on top of the screen now. If you are packaging a pure API library, one that does not depend on Jenkins APIs, then you should ignore newer Jenkins version and pick an older LTS. Something around one year old that does not have too many detached plugins makes a good choice. And 2.361.2 would be a reasonable candidate. Mm -hmm. My worry is I think that should be dot three because I think we always want it to be the tail of an LTS line, not the middle of an LTS line. And I'm not sure how to express that, Bruno. The uh, I will find out. So choosing a Jenkins by the line. Okay. Um, it's all... You know, I get the whole list of all the LTS and so on, and then I have to pick up the right one. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the exact uh, process for this one. For some of them, I looked at what the Ruby script was doing. So it was going maybe seven LTS before and so on. So I'll see uh, what I can do, how this is uh, computed, and I'll fix it. I think 
I will be able to fix Well, it. and it may be that the Ruby script was previously doing exactly what this is doing. It could well <laughs> be that that it was recommending midstream versions. I just think that in the advice that's offered here, we want it to use the tail end, the last release of that right. LTS, because that's what we use in every other example on the page is we either tell them there isn't a last, therefore use dot one, but otherwise use the dot three or dot four, use the final version, the terminal version. Got it. Would you like it to appear in another PR or should I amend the current one? Another PR is fine. This, that is certainly nothing that deserves to be to be in, in the way of your current PR. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Bruno. Appreciate that. And thank you, Mark, for pointing all that out. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the version documentation site for Jenkins.io. Uh, this is the uh, tail end of the Google Summer of Code project that we've had going on. Um, thanks again to Chris Stern and Bandi for all of their work on this. Um, they're working on the blog presentation. Uh, they have the 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 prototype site lot up and running so we can check it out at any point in time. Um, we have displayed it previously, but it looks really good. Looks nice and clean and uh, I think does a really nice job of presenting some of the page elements uh, a little nicer uh, and highlighting things a little bit better. So uh, really look forward to that. Uh, they are looking to get the site live uh, before the end of the year, before the holidays start. Um, and they're working on that. So uh, a little bit more needs to be done, but um, yeah, two, more to come on that. And then, uh, so the last thing I had on the agenda for today is just some housekeeping. So next week is a uh, major US holiday, Thanksgiving here in the US. So um, EU, US documentation office hours will be canceled. And uh, Mark, I wrote it down, Asia's office hours are canceled as well. Is that uh, correct? Or I figured I'd double check with you. Correct. Yeah, you're okay. right. I, I will be. I will be either sleeping or playing with my grandchildren at that time. I definitely will not be talking about Jenkins documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I will probably also be having some food at that point in time. So uh, I'm excited about that part. But yeah, I will miss everyone for the week. So, um, but yeah, that covers everything I had on the agenda for us today. Uh, anything else anyone wanted to discuss or throw out there before we wrap up? No. All right, then. So um, we'll stop. We'll end it here. Uh, recording will be available in 24, 48 hours. And uh, until two weeks from now, uh, take care, stay safe. Uh, anyone celebrating Thanksgiving, have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you then. Take care. Bye. Bye.